pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do have a full quorum. <coughs> Well, Andy, I'm sure you don't have anything to talk about. Things are rolling right along up at the jail are painting. So someone said they were in there with welders this weekend. So I'm hoping they're getting uh, light pedestals put in in the old part so they can put the lights in when they come in. I haven't talked to Chuck yet this week. I'll get a hold of him on my Wednesday. So it's the lighting, people that are doing all the lighting, they're doing the welding, is that no, it? I, well, I think they subcontracted with someone. But as far as I know, I think they've been asking Larry if he's come in and weld the... Larry was there this weekend. Okay. Putting in, was he in the old part? I don't know. He was just there. He was there the Sunday. Okay. <clears throat> so... They should have the uh, variable bridge flow system up and going. I talked like they'd have it going this week. So I'll be curious to see how that works. But they're going to have to go through and take all the... And I, I looked at the contract and I didn't know how closely anybody had looked at that, but it says in the contract that they, they will remove all the air conditioners. Well, in doing that, Right. There, there are some windows upstairs in the attic they can use. They thought they didn't have to make two or three of them. Because if you look at those windows, those were all specially made windows to fit those air conditioners. And they didn't just raise one up and stick the air conditioner in. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have to read. And I think that's probably why there's extra windows upstairs. They were, once they got to where they wanted to put the air conditioners in, the others didn't fit very well, so they actually made those windows, each one of them, where the air conditioners are, so, anyway, but it says in the contract that they will remove them, so I guess it doesn't necessarily say that they'll fill that hole in where the air conditioner yeah. is, but they did say they were Well, they are responsible for the envelope of the building, yeah. and if you leave they, a big hole there, you're, you're well, I'm not an expert, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> so, they'll be taking those out. Um, I don't know if I said before, but the Mitsubishi rep was there, and he said that system will operate and be efficient to 30 below. Hmm. Yeah. I hope we don't get that cold. I know. Yeah, that's very frosty. Now, I would think it would really run, but he said hmm. that I found that interesting that you could get heat out of 30 below. Yeah. But that's cheap. Yeah. You're really working to get that squeeze that out. right but anyway so i mean it's reasonable to expect that if it goes online this week we'll shut the boiler down for the year so i can't imagine we hit even what, remote 10 10 degrees right and we we'd probably want to kick the boilers on got to make, make sure that you know, if anything you hook up make sure it runs good right yeah for sure but they put in a few of these systems so he he, he needed the uh, John, John Terrell's the guy that's doing most of the running the job. He's he's really he said they're just super efficient, super quiet. Um, you guys will be amazed at how much little energy they use. Well, I assume that SmartWatch when they design all the stuff and all the monitoring um, equipment, there is a point where they've already established what the optimum efficiency is between the those Mitsubishi units and our boiler, right? Right, and that's probably what. It's going to be like probably around. I think it's probably around zero. Well, and that's one of the reasons that SmartWatt is keeping up the intensive monitoring, because I'm sure they have, you know, an eyeball paper guess about how much monitoring equipment they're leaving set up in there for the first three years. Mm. You know, they can probably fine tune and find out exactly where that line is. Right. There'll be a lot of computer control. On yeah. All that. Yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of watching the temperature, you know, having the temperatures and the energy going in and out, and they can, they can fine tune it. But. Um, I think something we, we might want to 
look at, and I, I was talking to Larry Gower with Sycamore Engineering, I'm a little concerned about those outdoor units, somebody getting into them. Mm -hmm. I, I think we probably need to look at probably putting, fence the, around. putting the fence around because there's, if you look, there's, there's copper <coughs> pipes. I mean, you know, you know, people see copper and they think, oh, I can go get take that. Yeah. Um, it, would you get it with like that privacy stripping that goes in that chain link? I'd like, yeah, that, that would the, be I, ideal as long as as long as we put it far enough away where they can still service it. Like probably a couple of feet out. I don't know. There's probably a couple of those bushes that maybe would have to come out. I don't know. I'm not real. Yeah. Hip on those bushes anyway. They're really way past. Is there. like real king do that? Cause can you, or who who would we go to? I don't know. Like that. Chain link fence. Chain link fence up. It. Yes, Andrea at the Helmel shelter. She gets she gets cages. That'd be similar. She probably goes out to Brook King and buys the panels. Yeah, you can buy the cages pretty much. Yeah, I don't know locally anybody that does it. Anymore. He mentioned someone out Terre Haute. He goes, but if you want somebody local, mm -hmm. I don't know. Ever since Wagner went out, that's mm -hmm. <laughs> all he does it anymore. Oh, I when I have fans done, I have the Amish do it. I've got a guy that do you? I got I don't know what he want to. They're over in over in Indiana. They cast that chain link right there. So well, I know a couple guys that do a lot of stock fencing in the county, but as far as chain link, chain link. if they want to mess with it, I don't know either. Anyway, I think something we'll probably need to look into. And I, I didn't quite catch whether uh, Sycamore Engineering was going to do it and include that in part of the price of, of putting that in there. I don't know. So I'll see. Okay. Um, <coughs> other than that. I think they've got a little bit of, they mean there's a few light fixtures at the courthouse and a few in different locations that when these ones from the uh, jail come in, they'll come back for like two or three days, put all the rest of these lights in and the lighting will be done. So we're getting close. They got basically all the plumbing done for the jail. Uh, one thing, uh, I was going to try to find it. I couldn't, I don't remember the guy's name, so I got to look through all my old emails, but I, I misquoted the, the treatment system for the boiler, and the, I said twice, $6,000. So does it have to be done now? I don't know. Probably before next winter sometime, we need to be looking at putting a treatment uh, system in of some sort. And one thing they do need at the jail, is we need to put a water softener in. Or I, I would probably put one in for the entire building uh, because they've got a lot. Jeff said that the, a lot of problems with the toilets and things up there, where there's, there's like real small little lines that go to some of them and they get plugged with uh, calcium. Gotcha. So he, Probably something to look into putting a water system in, a water softening system in up there because you know, I've spent all that money on the plumbing. I want to make sure it doesn't get plugged up. So, other than that, that's where we are. I'm going to backtrack. Oh, is there any further questions? Oh. Andy? Sam? There's you guys some reports. You can <laughs> productive month for us, 148 calls, averaging a little over five a day, still keeping under two minutes for our dispatch to and route time. Um, transfers were down for 
both emergent and non-emergent. Um, surprisingly, our refused transports dropped a little bit too, which is super helpful. Um, intercepts too, so not seeing a terrible increase in intercepts, even though Christmas protocols downgraded a little bit. And then um, staying about consistent with our PR events through the winter, those are starting to tick up now that the weather's getting nicer. <clears throat> Looking at the second page, 63.83% uh, came to Paris, the next being Union at 14.89%, and then the not applicables, and those roll in your, um, your refused transports and your AMAs, those types of things. Medic 4, the fourth ambulance, as of Friday, is completely licensed, entitled, and ready to inspect it and ready to go. And then in February, we did also have our full IDPH inspection on all of our ambulances, and all of those passed successfully. So we are at, running at four ambulances. The fourth is just a spare. There is not a crew staffing it. How long does it take? I mean, if you can get if you, things... Yeah, we just put an all call out, and, um, you know, we have people that live, some in Paris, some in Kansas. I mean, within 15, 20 minutes, we could get somebody on that rig if we needed it. Um, <coughs> and it's fully stocked just like the rest of the world? Yeah. Are you going to put that truck in rotation some just to, I mean, how do you? Well, probably not. Okay. Probably not. It'll, I mean, it'll get used because how it currently works is one has to go out of service if it needs an oil change or a tire rotation or something like that, whereas now we'll be able to constantly keep in service all three while one goes down gotcha. and gets a service. So it will get used monthly. I mean, we get almost monthly oil changes, as you can imagine, in tire rotation. So. Okay. I told, told Samantha I got my bill off and it's being transferred to Terry Very reasonable. So. Are they still doing a siren salute for you? Uh, sort of. Do you want to tell them what very reasonable was for you? Ninety-nine dollars for a transfer. So he had to go from Paris to Union, mm -hmm. and Medicare is his primary, right. and we build Medicare, and his out-of-pocket was $99 yeah, I for the transfer. Yet, or out of pocket yet, yeah, he hadn't met his out-of-pocket. So otherwise, it been nothing. Yeah, so it's very reasonable. Good Makes sense. Anyway, so it's 65 and on Medicare. I'm kind of thrifty anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I, 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 I sit know. by you. I can tell you're pretty thrifty. <laughs> okay. And, um, some of you may have already heard um, we did add addition of two full-time staff this month as well. Um, both of those are former ECSSA employees that live in the county who are now going to be working for us. So Cody Moko and Sean Robinson. With the addition of Sean Robinson, he is um, an approved as an instructor. So beginning, our goal is May, but realistically probably June, <coughs> we will start offering a first responder EMT <coughs> basic course locally. Any questions for me? Thank you. Thank you. You're and I'm just all out of order. Are there any public comments this morning? Nothing. I waited till you got order. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate I that, but no, I'm all right. <laughs> all right. Okay, Dan. I have not. Andrew had said, "Hey, man, you know, uh, three of our cats showed up over on Wood Street, so I'm happy." <laughs> So I got one missing. Yeah. John? I have nothing. And for the record, so you know, there's a real good chance I wouldn't be here at Wednesday's meeting. Yeah, you I will try, but... It's cool. We won't miss you. I'll be on. That's why I wanted to speak up. <laughs> nothing? Nothing. Are you feeling better? Better. How, how many have voted, do you know? I couldn't tell you. <clears throat> yeah. Last I heard, about 300. I missed a whole week, so I don't know. Glad to have you with us. Thank you. Carl? 
Um, over the weekend, I had a couple phone calls um, from people that read newspaper articles about the um, on the public safety tax articles, and the questions were um, on the first after the first meeting. One of the county board members commented that there was just four road deputies, which I knew was not correct. And then this last meeting, the article said that there was three road deputies, and I just wanted to, I guess, make the record straight, we've got deputies here, they can account for more than three deputies, and uh, and I guess my comment would be that currently I think we have seven deputies. Uh, one of them, one of those seven, is um, I guess his duties have been reassigned, but part of his duties incur include stuff that road deputies do. And, um, of course, two weeks ago, the sheriff hired a chief deputy. I don't think he's officially started yet, but here soon he's going to be starting. You know, that would be the additional, make an additional seventh deputy. Well, so how many full-time right. deputies do we have in an active status as of right now? You go for it. I'll just go back to what Carl was saying there about the you know what was stated at the meeting and what was put in the paper, and probably the confusion there was that I'd say at least when that first meeting was had was that we had three full-time deputies that were actually working due to one being reassigned and two out on injury. Right. Right. Uh, three full-time deputies covering 24/7 right. with the help of you know a couple part-time deputies also. Um, we've since gotten one back on, you know, from working's comp, and so we have four of us now working uh, actively than the one that was reassigned. Thank you. Yeah. And the, the chief deputy that will be starting here in the future. Yeah, the way I understand, yeah. he's going to assume that role. Uh, right. First of April. Yeah. Right. How many part-time deputies are available? I think there's four. Not all of them work each week, but there's sure. Yeah, yeah. Lost, we have. A, a there's a reason they're part time. Yeah. I understand right. that yeah. right. they all have, you know, full time jobs and mm -hmm. right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and all of this is important is to be as clear and as accurate as we can be. Right. So, right. and that's exactly. swings both ways. Yeah. So right. But that was the concern of the pe one person knew that better, and the other person was concerned that you only got three deputies working. I said, no, that's not the case. So I just. But it was three full time. time. It was three, yeah, it was three full time. At that yeah. point, because yeah. that was status, right. because that's what matters to these guys. And that was working. brought up by the deputies, not by uh, the right. board. I brought yeah. up by uh, Clayton. Clayton was up just, just for accuracy. Yeah. But you yeah. had more than that on right. to leave. But well, you know, well, then that's fine. That, that's yeah. accurate too. But that's and and some people will perceive or take something from a conversation that isn't all the information that was laid out. So. It's always a battle is to, to get that information out and to people and have them understand exactly what's going on. And so sometimes you're just not going to... Well, if you had eight deputies, if you had four of them on medical leave, Absolutely. you right. only have four, you know, so, right. Right. you know, it's just, we have that many people, just unfortunately, you know, due to injuries, you know, they're, they weren't available, but, you know, Adam's back now, so I think he started last week. Well, I mean, I think... Monday. I, I, I think the... Over, Hopefully the other will be back <laughs> soon. <laughs> wouldn't you say that our... In an ideal scenario, we would have seven full-time active road deputies, right? So I don't know that a chief that deputy, pardon, right, that a chief deputy would count towards that, or any uh, any I, deputy that is not. I think, able to I think a chief deputy will be included. To, he's going to be doing for the most part what a deputy does. Are they take, so he's the taking part. road shifts? I mean, has that been the experience yeah, in the past? Work, he will have work in a shift, and he can handle calls just like a, a deputy can. What's the difference? I don't know. I, I know how it is. I've been there. I know. Right. Well, that's what I'm wanting yeah. you to tell me, right? So, right. so you, I would expect that a chief deputy <coughs> would fill the eight to five or whatever role it is, doing right. mostly office work. That we could fill a shift or be there on call if something happened, but is not filling a road shift. So, if we're trying to fill two by twenty-four-seven, 
that a chief deputy might fill. Well, and so, again, right now we're just wishing, right? So ideal scenario, what do we want? And so if we can't, if we can't lay that out and state what we want, then we're already at, a, at an impasse. We've got a problem, right? So if in order to have our shifts filled and not dip overly into the overtime well that we have six, you know, done very well, right? How many just strictly road deputies do we need? And if it's seven, but one of those is the chief deputy, that's great, but I can't say that. If someone asked me, I could say, well, they could potentially fill a shift, but that's not their primary role, right? Well, they'll be on day shift, and if for some reason one of these guys is sick and no one else available, then you have someone to work that shift. One would expect the chief deputy and then to be doing the scheduling and could also ask at an overtime or a part-time deputy to take that spot too, right? Or to ask one of the current deputies to fill overtime. Could. I bet, you know, that's management issue. You know, how um, how you have, that's that's obviously an issue. I'm not that's why we, with how that why we the have to have department. these people. That's why we had to go out and get these people because of there is a management issue. Sure. Right. Well, like I said, we're we just need to expand additional money, county money because of that issue. Absolutely. So, everybody here in, your, in your mind, oh, yeah. with a yeah. chief deputy and a sheriff, how many full time road deputies do we need that can do all the duties? I mean, what, what's reasonable to expect? Is it five? Is it six? Well, is it seven? I don't know. It depends on whether you want to round the clock, you know. I think that's, that's kind of where we're going. That's what well, we're yeah. Going. And obviously, laid out to people. Cur under the current money available, obviously we can't do that. Right, right. again, we're in the wishing phase, right. but we, we wanted to find what the issue is, right? right. So we wanted to find what the issue is, so right. if, you know, if and when we get that, right. we can say, here's what we're shooting for, right? Mm -hmm. Here's here's the gap we need to fill. And so I'm still confused as to what that is. What's So the, is the minimum five strictly road deputies? Can we go with seven plus a chief? I, that would be, if, I mean, the, personally, I deal, perfect world. I deal, yeah. personally, yeah, that would be my, my desire. Seven, seven plus a That's chief basically deputy. what we've been telling the folks. Yes. Right. The, the chief right. deputy and a day shift guy. Right. Yeah. Leave, leaving one full-time road deputy, not counting the chief deputy on day shift. Mm -hmm. I think we can do it with seven. So we currently have a delta of three. Correct? Four. Four. Four, 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 four now. I'm saying that as of last week. Right. Well, the delta needs chief, to change. Chief deputy, right? right? Is, we're not counting him. Right. Right. So if ideally you have a chief deputy in seven, we've got soon to be a chief deputy in four. Yes. So delta in three. Okay. Okay. I guess. I'm good. All this military stuff just. I thought it was a physics term. That's where I learned oh, it. Yeah. See, it's physics, too, right? I have a yeah, physics term. It's, it's, it's a Greek letter. I thought we can change. Yeah. Carl? I'll just. That's all I'm going to say. No, I'm fine. Bill? That's all I'm going to say. I'm done. Please. Just shut up. <laughs> I have a question for Carl. Is everything at the jail listening. running smoothly? I've heard a lot of comments. From different people, and some of them are probably pretty accurate. I mean, like that's the almost workers, a personnel the issue. Nine one one, all that, or is everybody kind of getting along and everything running halfway decent? I think we're going. To I just can't keep the two. We're doing the best I can. No, no, I'm not talking about no, we specific can. personnel. Just general. There's issues, but uh, you know. Hopefully we're getting personnel in place to deal with those yeah, issues and hopefully it'll all work out. I hear too much crap around here. There is friction. Remember, room. there's con there's construction, there's new people, there's people that have been there for years. Uh, there's a lot going on. There's there. a lot going on okay. and it does cause stress and friction. Okay. And I would say we're trying to work through that. From a county board request to everybody involved, we know it's not easy, we yeah. know it's a mess. True. Just please do your best to get along with everybody, yeah. and we'll we'll get to the goal. Is that fair, Carl? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I just wondered that. No, I, I mean, a, lot of, a lot of stuff. Well, and I, they need encouragement. Okay. I try to. Yeah. No, I'm sure you do. Yeah. Everybody needs encouragement and time, and no. so you're good enough, you're smart enough, you got enough people like that. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Derek. 
Um, so we have our signed rebid submitted for April letting on what is now just the resurfacing of our existing parallel taxiway uh, to uh, our east-west runway, our main <coughs> runway. Um, we will kick the um, what used to be the part of that, the, exp the final expansion of the ramp to the next period and uh, hopefully include that with what is that L-shaped taxiway that will allow flow through traffic. When we're in busy spray season, we've got seven planes running. So hopefully this one goes through. Hopefully we we're done with the hangups there and we'll get that uh, going. Uh, we've heard from the ambulance. So again, I appreciate you guys, you guys' work and, and the visibility that comes with these reports. I think it's a, it's a great thing we've got. So thank you for that. Um, and that's it. Okay. Looking at the uh, agenda, it's sort of a light one. One of the things on there, item number eight, is a resolution to clarify purpose of public safety sales tax. If you guys would look at that and make any comments on that, at the last uh, study session to the public down at the bank last Monday, it was suggested to us, uh, or yeah, one day, yeah, it was suggested to us that we might make a resolution of clarification even though the the law and the Department of Revenue was very clear on what that tax could be used for it was kind of a rededication of how the board feels and giving them hope that future boards might feel the same way if it does pass does that make sense in other words this is what we intend it to be used for this is what we're going to use it for and in the future, that's what we're going to use it for. So nobody finds, hopefully nobody will find a loophole in the future that might cause it to be used differently. I think they had in the paper, sorry, helped it. They had, it was nice. That's fine. I just, and if you have any comments on this, we can always amend it or change it to whatever form you would like, either stronger or however you'd like to deal with it. And again, it is just basically reiterating the law that we already operate under, okay, if that passes. We do have the reappointment of Martha Irwin as jury commissioner. Marty's up there in the judge's office. And then we have the resolution of support of a form of new state. And uh, we were asked to... Uh, Consider that. We haven't really discussed it. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but... I mean, if we, somebody wants to put something on the ballot that at least you know, makes sense, I'm all for it. Let people decide. So. so, and that would be on the state ballot. It's not authorizing us to put it on our local ballot. Okay? Every county has to um, either buy... <coughs> petition or by the county board's resolution say that we would like this pla placed on a statewide ballot and I guess they need all 102 counties so yeah you can't have anybody in the middle it has to be all contiguous yeah I guess I mean, I'm not so it wouldn't be 102 necessarily it just has to be the group start oh start yeah it could be 100 and and six, we're, we're cooking 89, this, but 89. Yeah. everything yeah so if you don't object, I mean, Augie and I decided to put it on the agenda. Uh, we can always table it or, or not act upon it, but I don't think it hurts anything, but that's up to you folks. Okay. I've got no problems putting it on. We're, we would like to speak to the state's attorney uh, after the meeting on... Wednesday, Augie, I know you and I have talked about it, but I wanted to reiterate it so the board heard that. I am assuming that everybody would like to hear. We've had some things happen, and not bad things, but we've had some issues, and we need to find out about them, okay? Yes? Uh, we talked one time about uh, the sales of marijuana in Gavin County. Have you ever done anything with that? The city hasn't and we haven't. Okay, well, there's some, I've heard just someone might have a 
A box store? Yeah, a box store, yeah. <laughs> Would it be Maybe inside the... I don't know who it is or anything, but I just, somebody mentioned it, that they were interested in... I mean, well, the mayor and I, I think I reported, uh, I talked... So see, I've done anything... And, that, yeah, they weren't going to do anything mm -hmm. at this point. Okay, uh, I just wondered. We kind of talked like if we should be not in lockstep, but at least <coughs> consider what the city was doing with, with whatever... We well, that's why I told him basically. Yeah, Go ahead. And, and my big question on that is <coughs> somebody applies for a state permit to open a pot store, be it in, in Paris city limits or in the county. And if we don't have an ordinance prohibiting this, the city, you know, the state will go ahead and improve it. There is the sales tax, additional sales tax potential. Can we go back after the fact and institute that, or do we have to have that in place before a permit was issued? Yeah, we have to. I, I don't know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. I know we can enact, I think it's a 3%. Something yeah, like I, I know that, and that's my only concern on the timing issue. I would hate to see one get approved since it's not, you know, since there's no ordinance prohibiting somebody opening. And then we can't, at a later date, get sales tax on it. That would be a bit of a bite. Oh, I mean, that shouldn't be an issue, right? I mean, hell, we're, we're trying to do it right now for everybody. You know what I'm saying? As far as increase the sales tax. So a stipulation saying that, you know, an additional 3%. Yeah, but would we have to do it by referendum? You know, if we can do it by board beforehand versus uh, referendum okay. after. Or, I mean, I, I don't know. That's just... We can check with Effingham. They just opened one up. We can we can make a call and find out or yeah. ask the state's attorney at some point. I know we have a lot of uh, documents that the state has sent us through our counties association on that issue. I just don't remember because it's been months since I looked at it. You you don't recall, do you? Andy? I do not. <clears throat> I'll find the information now. Okay. Yeah, because I'm not too worried about the store, but sure, hate to lose the uh, yeah, additional revenue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Anything else to come before the meeting? Entertain a motion to adjourn. Move. Derek moves. Andy seconds. All those in favor, signify by saying oh, aye. Do we, need a, do we need to have an executive session now? Closed session. Okay. You didn't need it. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. It carries. We are adjourned.